Hi, this is Amy Romeo from the craft blog, amyromeo.com. And on this channel, I'm gonna be teaching you fun and easy jewelry making and crafting projects every week. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to make ice cream cone earrings using faux leather, heat transfer vinyl, and a Cricut. If you wanna make this project along with me, you can grab my free SVG cut file from a link in the description box below. I'll also have links to all the materials that I used and a link to the complete tutorial on my blog. So if you're ready to learn how to make these cute ice cream cone earrings for yourself, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let's get started. Let's go over the materials I used to make this project. I used a Cricut Maker, but you could also use an Explore Air 2 or even the Cricut Joy. You'll need a purple cutting mat and a green cutting mat faux leather in the tan color of your choice for the cone, two colors of heat transfer vinyl, I used glitter and foil iron-on. You'll also need blue painter's tape, craft scissors, a weeding tool, two pair of flat nose pliers, earring hooks and jump rings, a 1 16th inch paper punch, a good fabric glue, a heat pressing pad, and a Teflon cover sheet or parchment paper and then a Cricut Easy Press Mini or an Easy Press or a traditional heat press. After you've downloaded the SVG file for this project from my resource library, you'll need to unzip the folder that it came in so the SVG file is loose and available to be uploaded to Cricut Design Space. You'll click on the Upload button in Cricut Design Space, browse and locate the file and click on it to bring it here into your recently uploaded images row. You'll click on it so it's highlighted in green and click insert images. Drag it up to the top left. And I just wanted to show you in the layers panel on the right hand side, you'll see there's two ice cream scoop shapes that will cut from any kind of heat transfer vinyl you wanna use. Two crisscross waffle cone shapes, again, that will cut from vinyl. I'll be using foil, iron on. And then there's four of these cone shapes that I'm gonna cut from faux leather. Two are gonna be for the front and two are gonna be for the back. I like to put a back on earrings sometimes if I want them to have some structure and be stiffer and not curl. And also it just makes the back of the earring look more finished. If you don't wanna cut those back shapes, you can click on this eye here and that'll keep them from cutting. If you wanna make these earrings a little smaller, maybe for a child, or if you just want them to be smaller for whatever reason, you can go up here to the size box and change the height and make them a little smaller. I would say uh, I wouldn't go any smaller than about 1.8 inches for this design. Once you've made any adjustments you want to on this screen, you're going to click the Make It button. And this is going to sort your materials into the different cutting mats. So we have three mats. One is for the foil crisscross, one is the faux leather shapes, and one is the ice cream cone scoops. And because all of these materials cut face down, you'll wanna click on each mat and click on the mirror button so they'll cut in reverse. I like to mirror all of my mats up front just so I don't forget. Once we've mirrored our mat, we wanna make a note of the size of material you're gonna to wanna to cut. So it looks like we're gonna to wanna to cut a piece of foil that's just slightly bigger than two inches wide and almost two inches tall. You'll click the continue button. And on this screen, we're gonna make the material selections each mat at a time. So for this first mat, since I'm gonna be using foil iron-on, I already have it selected here as a favorite and I can just click on it. But if you don't have foil iron-on as a material favorite, you can click here on browse all materials, search for foil iron-on, and when it pops up, you can click on it to select it. So I'll just go ahead and select foil iron on here. I don't need to change the pressure. I'm gonna keep the pressure at the default setting. And now I'm ready to cut. To cut the foil iron on for the crisscross shape on the ice cream cone, place your foil square shiny side down on your mat and press it down all over with your fingers. Load the mat into the machine and press the double arrow button. Then press the flashing C button for the cut to start.
When the cut's complete, press the double arrow button again to unload the machine and then peel the foil off of the green cutting mat. Now it's time to weed it. To weed the waffle cone texture out of the foil, put the foil shiny side down on a flat surface and use your weeding tool to start picking away the areas of foil around the shape you wanna keep. Weed out the whole border first and then start picking out the little tiny squares inside the waffle shape. The next mat that's gonna cut is the faux leather ice cream cone shapes for the front and the back of the earrings. The first thing you'll wanna do is make sure that your mirror setting is on for this mat. If not, you can click on the edit button and make that toggle selection. You're gonna to wanna to hover over the mat preview with your mouse so you can see what size material you need to cut for these shapes. So I'm gonna cut a piece of faux leather about six inches wide and three inches high. For the material selection I'm gonna be using, I like the Cricut faux leather paper thin material setting. Even though this material isn't paper thin, this is an automatic double cut setting. So I find that it cuts through most faux leathers really nicely. If you don't have this material selection already showing up here in your favorites, you can click on the Browse All Materials menu and search for Faux Leather Paper Thin and select it, and that'll bring it into your material choices here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. And then for pressure, I like to select more when I cut faux leather, but your machine may be different for you. We're gonna use the regular fine point blade that comes with your Cricut, either the Maker or the Explore or even the Joy, so that setting's fine. So the only thing that's left to do is load the mat and press the button. To cut the faux leather, you'll wanna place the faux leather pretty side down on a good and sticky part of your purple strong grip cutting mat. Press it down firmly with your fingers or use a brayer to roll over it to make sure it sticks really well to the mat. Then tape all around the faux leather with some blue painter's tape. This will keep the material from shifting and moving on your cutting mat. Load your faux leather mat into the Cricut by pressing the double arrows button to load and then press the flashing C button to start the cut. When the cut's finished, the shape should easily peel off your mat and you can set them aside. We're back in Cricut Design Space to make the final material selection to cut our ice cream scoop shapes. I'm gonna check in the mat preview here, make sure the mirror setting is on, and I'm gonna hover over the mat preview and see that I need to cut a piece of glitter vinyl that's three inches wide by two inches tall. And in my material settings, I'm gonna click glitter vinyl and make that selection. I like to leave the pressure at default for glitter. If you're using a different material like foil or solid HTV, you'll wanna make a different material setting because those materials are much thinner than glitter vinyl. If I was using foil iron-on, I would choose this one, foil iron-on. And if I was cutting solid HTV, I like to use the washi sheet setting. So once we've made that selection, we're ready to prepare the mat and load it and cut it. Cut the vinyl ice cream scoops with your green cutting mat. Place the material shiny side down and load the mat into the Cricut and press the flashing C button to begin the cut.
When the cut's finished, remove the material from the mat and weed it using your weeding tool. To press the vinyl onto the faux leather shapes, I like to use my Cricut Easy Press Mini, but you could also use a Cricut Easy Press or a traditional heat press. Start by layering the crisscross foil and cover with a Teflon sheet or a piece of parchment paper to protect your heat surface. I put the Easy Press on the lowest heat setting and just gently rub without pressing down too hard or letting the heat press stay too long in one spot. Peel off the clear carrier sheet and then put the scoop on top. Cover again with the Teflon sheet or the parchment paper and repeat the pressing process. Then repeat with the second earring. To glue the earring back to the front, I like to use Art Glitter Glue. It's a fabric glue, it doesn't have any glitter in it, but it does have a nice precision tip which makes it easy to apply glue in very small areas. I put glue all on the back and then I press down the front of the earring and I press, I press it all over up to the edges and wipe away any excess glue that might seep out. After you've glued both of your earring fronts to your backs, then place them underneath something heavy, like a book, for at least a couple of hours, but overnight's best. After the glue is dried, punch the hole in your earring using a 1 16th inch punch. I like to punch the hole in the first earring and then line it up with the second earring so that the holes are in the same location. Before you can put on the earring hooks, first you need to rotate the direction of the earring hook loop so your earrings will hang straight. To do this, hold the earring hook firmly between your thumb and your forefinger with one hand and then use flat nose pliers to firmly grip the loop with the other hand. Do a little twist so the earring loop is now perpendicular to the hook. You can see the difference between the twisted loop and the original loop here. Repeat for the other earring hook and then you're ready to add your jump rings and your earrings. To connect your earring hook to the ice cream cone, you'll want to use a jump ring. And to easily open a jump ring, I like to use two pairs of flat nose pliers. I grip one end with one pair of pliers and with the other pair of pliers, I just twist the ring open without distorting it out of the shape of a circle. Then slide the jump ring on the earring, slide your earring hook on, making sure it's going in the right direction and then use the second pair of pliers again just to twist the jump ring back closed again. That's it. Your ice cream earrings are complete.
I hope you like that project as much as I did. Those earrings are really fun to make and there's a million possibilities for the ice cream cone scoop colors, which is really fun. If you wanna see more fun projects like this one, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you on my next video. Thanks for watching.